this first question here is uh, a reverse take on using the Ranko counter here, right? So this is the uh, shark Ranko counter here. So let's see, let's open up the indicators list. All right, so if you go into shark indicators and then go into tools, there you go, it's, it's that Ranko counter right there. So, and uh, the Shark Renko counter uh, was designed a long time ago when it was built to work with the two different Unirenko bars that are out there. So there are actually, yeah, two, uh, two Unirenko bars. Uh, I think they're, they, they function exactly the same, but uh, they have different ID numbers. So, in any case, a little side note there. Yeah, so the question is, so normally most people think of the Ranko counter um, to use the, to, yeah, I mean, let me rephrase this. So most people think of using the Ranko counter as the entry price, right? So for placing a stop entry order to get in. So, but this question is, is, is reversed here where um, they want to use the Ranko counter actually as the exit, uh, as an exit condition. So like right here, when price comes down and it touched uh, the lower price there, uh, use that as actually the exit uh, condition within Blackbird there, right? So we'll reverse everything uh, for this one. And apparently I don't have Blackbird up and running yet. So first things first. All right, let's get that going there. Now, normally, keep in mind, the Ranko counter, uh, its calculate setting does want to run using on price changed. Although, when you're using uh, Ranko bars, right, the price doesn't actually change for Ranko bars, right? So the closing price is fixed and the reversal closing price are fixed for Ranko bars. So if you're using this with a Ranko bar, you actually don't have to change the calculate to on price change. Um, yeah, the on price change is only necessary when you're using uh, at least the shark Ranko counter with range bars, right? Because range bars, the closing upper and lower prices, right, always change depending on how much price went up or down when that range bar was developing, right? So, um, yeah, so you gotta think of those things here. So, uh, so let's, so we can, let's see. Well, actually, you know, you know what? Yeah, and in order to do this, this evaluation, so in order to, to see when price comes down and actually prints and touches uh, the opposite price level. Actually, that calculation does require. So the the actual calculation to figure, you know, for Blackbird to figure out whether price had touched, you know, the lower or upper price uh, uh, price value there, actually does require the calculate to be on price change there. So um, yeah, so that's just a a, a fundamental what. Ninja Trader requirement in order to get in order to be able to do that calculation in real time there. So we'll leave it on price change here. <clears throat> Give it a sec to load up. There we go. All right, let's open the order settings window. There we go. All right, so um, the entry order is not important this time. So we'll just go with the market and the stop loss here. Yeah, there's really no need to use a stop loss, but we need something, all right? So in order to get Blackbird to, you know, flatten the trade here, uh, we need either a profit target or a stop loss, you know, so that we can put that, uh, what, that condition into a trailing rule, so. So I'll go with a profit target here. So we'll put it in the profit target. And I will um, push this 
Actually, I guess, let's see. Yeah, no, I'm, I'll push this out a little bit further there. There. All right. So in order to, yeah, uh, give Blackbird the ability, right, to evaluate uh, the bar price, you know, against the Renko counter there, we're going to uh, enable the the uh, trailing rules here. So let's set that to custom. We'll add a trailing rule there. All right. So we're going to flatten the position um, on the Renko counter um, touch. There we go. <clears throat> there. All right. So there's no prerequisite. Um, right. In other words, uh, the market doesn't need to do anything. We don't care about how much profit or loss or anything like that. So we can, let's see. Actually, no. We are going to use the trigger to figure this out. Yeah. So we are using the trigger here. And the trigger we're going to use is price versus an indicator. All right. So this trigger is similar to the... Bloodhound's comparison solver, right? Where you have input A uh, and input B, and then you know you're evaluating is A, you know, equal or great or above B, right? Or you know, or is A equal or below B, right? Same thing as what the Bloodhound's comparison solver. So it's kind of like a simplified version of that. All right. So let's see here. So for input A. Uh, right, we want to evaluate the either the high or the low of the bar and see if it equals the Renko counter prices here. All right, so if we're wanting to exit a long trade, then we are comparing the low price right to the Renko counter. So let's open up input A. So for a long trade, we want to evaluate the low price, right? The low wick of, of the Renko bar. And if it's a short trade, right, then the opposite, right? The high of the bar there. And now input B, that will be the Renko counter. So let's open this up. Go into the Shark Indicators folder, Tools, and there is the Renko counter, right? <clears throat> and you'll notice what's special about the Shark Renko counter, right, is it has a <clears throat> um, close price up, right, for the upper um, price there, and a close price down for the lower right, price there. So for if we're in a long trade, we want to compare against the close price down and then the opposite for a short trade there. Let's see. All right, yep, that should do it. And if if we wanted to, we could also add an offset, right? Add an offset to these prices here, right? So let's say you wanted to get out uh, if if the market gets within one tick, right? One tick below that upper price, right? So if we're in a downtrend right now, let's say we're in a short trade, so we'd want to exit if if uh, if um, the market right, gets within one tick, right? Then we could, you know, so for long we'd be adding one tick. For a short trade, right, we'd be subtracting one tick, right? We'd take the upper price and then subtract one tick down, right? So you could add or subtract, you know, a tick there. Um, so keep in mind, though, that if we did something like this, right, like keep in mind that, right, when a bar closes, that price changes. So you no longer have um, access to the prior bars uh, prices so you can't check if the market moves one tick past that upper or lower price right because as soon as that bar closes 
then those prices change and they update themselves. So you can't go past, yeah, you can't evaluate price against the upper or lower prices past, right, outside those prices there. You can only check if, right, if the market uh, moves with inside those two price price points there, right? So if I did something like this, like if I did a negative one and a positive one, you know, uh, that condition would never occur um, because the Renko counter, right, will, will change and update its price there. So, uh, all right, so I'll leave those at zero there. Yeah, we'll just leave them back at zero. Um, and now we need to check the mode there. So let's see. All right, so is A equal or above B? No, we don't want above B. So because the low price is always going to be above, right, that lower price. It's always. So we need um, A equal or below, uh, below B. And let's reverse it for the short trade there, above B there, right? So at least now we have the A equals, right? Because as explained before, right, the low price is never going to go below the Renko counters, you know, low price, um, right? Or yeah, lower, lower value there. So. All right, so let's see here. Yep, that'll do it. So for so the trigger, right? That trigger condition is what's doing that evaluation there, right? And so that's why we need at least either a profit target or a stop loss so that we can get a trailing rule uh, enabled here to do this evaluation. So all right, and so. Th now the next part is the easy part here is we're going to change the action. So instead of moving the order, we're going to flatten, there you go, flatten the position there. All right. And of course, once you're flat, right, there's no more trade on. So you can't repeat this rule anymore. So the repeat, we can just leave that on none. And there we have it. All right. So that let's go test this out so let's see let's go short let's see oh we got within one tick let's see if the market's gonna work with us here yeah I'll probably have to change my data feed there but maybe With, there we go ah, but it was hard to see because the NQ moves way too fast there but yeah you know, Blackbird closed it out as soon as it touched it and then price gapped up two ticks and made that next bar there so, alright let's I'll try another one Well, got within one tick. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, the NQ moves so quickly. Anyways, so there we have it. So this here, so this trigger price versus indicator, right? That is the key right there so all right so that question was from Randy so there we have it